short answer is yes, you can probably be fine. I'm a pilot on Boeing 767 and I can explain. Now, when an emergency of any type happens, we will get a indication, whether it's a flashing light or a written message on a screen or something, and that will bring us to something that we call the Quick Reference Handbook. The QRH is what pilots use in case of any emergency. This is the Quick Action Index. It's the front page of the QRE, and this is all the severe emergencies, you know, rapid depressurization, evacuation, engine fires, that kind of thing. These all have memory items, so I've had to memorize things on this list to do immediately in case of that. But as you'll notice, hydraulics isn't anywhere on here. So we go to the systems, come all the way back to chapter 13, and we start looking at the hydraulics. And we can see, you know, center only, left only, right only, or uh, combinations of them. And really, that's the thing, we have three systems on the 767, your aircraft will vary. But for being over the Pacific Ocean, you're going to have at least three. If you leave the left or right hydraulic systems, it's the same checklist. It will just say right instead of left. And as you can see, it's basically like them saying, have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Turn the system off, turn it back on. Does the light go out? Yeah, then you're fine. Does the light not go out? Okay, turn it back off and avoid large rudder inputs above 160. It continues to say, do not use the auto land feature, and a few things are going to work slower. Your trim's not going to be as fast. It's going to be a little bit stiffer to control the aircraft, but that's it. It's really, you continue on to your destination. We'll fix it when we get there. The center is where we have a problem, and we will come back or divert to our nearest thing. As you said, over the Pacific Ocean, we can still fly, but it's going to be a headache for the pilot because if you look... You start setting things off. Do not arm a speed brake lever. Manually expend speed brakes after landing. Use the flaps 20. Things are changing. The things that are inoperative with your center is your stabilizer trim, some spoiler panels, left system powers the trim at half rate. You cannot use the flaps normally and you cannot extend the landing gear normally. Now, the landing gear, you cut off the hydraulics, unlock the pins, and they drop on their own. So they'll come down, but that means you need to wait till you're close enough that you're, because you can't bring them back up again without hydraulics. The real headache's the flaps. When you normally extend the flaps, there's a selector, and then on an Airbus, it's like one, two, three, four. On a Boeing, it's one, five, 15, 20, 25, 30. They're in degrees of flaps versus just numbers of flaps on the Airbus. But, when you select it, normally it takes about five seconds for the flaps to extend. With the slower electric system, because you have no hydraulics, it takes about three minutes each time. And so it takes forever. It takes a long time to set up. You have to let ATC know, because much like that Airbus you saw in the video, you're probably not going to be able to taxi the aircraft either once you land. So you'll have to be towed. You'll have to stop on the runway. It's going to close a runway. They'll have to, you know either move traffic to another runway, or if you're unfortunately in an aircraft with just, or in an airport with just one runway, they'll have to close it until they get you off it. So that's why it's an emergency, but your safety as a passenger is never in question. I hope that helps.